Hi, so I'm back from Vegas. I've well and truly put my Micro Four Thirds cameras through the ringer uh, on a two week trip, which covered everything from low light to landscape, to city, to portraiture. I had so much fun. And I'm very, very happy to report that my Micro Four Thirds absolutely exceeded my expectations. Um, some of the photographs that I got, I'm really proud of. So I shall go through that with you now. We did a variety of outdoorsy, landscapey sort of things. We went to Red Rock Canyon, the Grand Canyon, via a helicopter, that was awesome. Valley of Fire, and then we also did Antelope Canyon, Horseshoe Bend. We found snow, <laughs> we got snowed in uh, after going to Zion National Park and doing Angel's Landing. So throughout this, I have to say, I used the Panasonic G7 way more than I used the Pen F. And when you consider that, that's absolutely wild because the Panasonic G7 retails for 499 with a lens. I bought this body only for 199 X display. Less than 200 pounds worth of camera and I got all that with it. I took my Pro 2.8 lens and also the zoom equivalent, the 35 to 100. However, the one I used overwhelmingly the most was this little beast. The Olympus 9 to 18 millimeter, so very wide angle lens, very slow, four to 5.6, but for what I was using it for, didn't make a difference. I got the world's smallest circular polarizer filter to put on it as well, and that worked wonders with the blue sky. So as you can imagine, this tiny little lens on the very, very light G7, or the very, very small, very, very light pen F, which was also very good, they both did wonderfully. And having the cameras so light and portable meant that getting up Angel's Landing or getting out of the car and, and doing a small hike to a viewing spot was so much easier than having a full frame and a big full frame lens. Low light. This is the thing that I guess a lot of you are concerned about and it's a valid point. I didn't get to use my tripod very much when I was there, which is a shame because I had a lot of things planned like the star trails and light trails, but then we got snowed in. <laughs> The weather turned terrible at one point when we were doing the hikes and that was the night where we was hoping for no light pollution because we was up a big mountain and it just didn't work. Which is a shame, but then we got snow, which is a happy sort of consolation prize. Low light stuff in terms of cityscapes, it did superbly at. Low light handheld, which is a challenge for most cameras, it was average at. I, I, I imagine a full frame would of course do better but it wasn't an ideal shooting circumstance anyway. Even with a full frame, you would hope to have a tripod in these circumstances. So it did okay, considering. Out of the helicopter, with, you might agree is the worst kind of low light handheld conditions you could hope for. It did pretty bad. But I think most cameras would do pretty bad. So I'm not going to hold that against my darling Micro Four Thirds. People, having such a small inobtrusive camera work wonders. I got some really good candid and sort of off the cuff photographs of my friends and it was lovely. I think the tones are very nice. The raw files on the Panasonic and the Olympus give me plenty to work with in post-production and I was very impressed. I find that I get a lot less posed shots when I come at people with these cameras. I think people are more at ease because they look like sort of point and shoots and Wedding season is upon us, and I'm very excited to see how these perform in that sense, loosening people up in the candid situations because they are so small and ninja-like. Dynamic range. Up there with noise and low light performance, I think dynamic range is also this thing that people have a stigma about with Micro Four Thirds. And you know, small sensors, science, I get it. So, to combat this, using the built-in bracketing, on both of the cameras, I shot a heck of a lot of HDRs, usually five brackets or seven brackets, depending on the scenario. The good news? Once I got it into the computer, I picked the middle exposure, the one that's correctly exposed, and found that there was more than enough dynamic range for me to not bother with the HDRs. So the dynamic range for me 
particularly if you underexpose it a little bit rather than overexpose, work wonders. I think I'm going to do a whole separate video on that in Lightroom and show you just how much give you have with these cameras because it did actually surprise me. To conclude, for my first personal big project doing travel photography in all these wonderful places, I'm so impressed. I cannot wait to see how the Micro Four Thirds work in the professional environment now that I'm back from a holiday and have to earn a living at photography again. But in um, my personal sort of photography, I'm well impressed. I hope you've enjoyed the videos and if you would like to see what I got up to on this trip in a, you know, vloggy kind of way, I do have a personal channel where I show all that silliness off. Thank you so much for watching and I shall put more content up imminently.